Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how you can make your regular 6 string guitar sound like a 12 string. If you're familiar with the guitar in, in some ways, you know that you can play the same note in the same octave in several different places. So like for example this G is the same as this G, it's the same as this G, and it's the same as this G. Right? So with that of course was Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd and that's going to be our main example that we're going to use today. So our first note is going to be a G. Now with the 12 strings, to my knowledge, it, they have like your primary note and then there's an octave above. That's what kind of gives it that shimmery kind of a sound, if that's the right word to use. But our first note's going to be G and I'm going to use my ring finger. So usually if we play a G chord, G major, you usually use your, your middle finger. But for right now I'm going to use my ring finger and I'm going to explain as we go along. So the G will be our first note, so we need a higher octave for that. And just how the guitar is set up, we have the G string and it's a higher octave from that. So that's going to be our first set of notes. Now I always try to encourage people to not only use the pick, but kind of get used to using some of the fingers too because that kind of opens up a, a lot of possibilities. All right, so in this case, to play this, we're going to have to utilize our middle finger, and if you prefer, you can use your ring finger as well. So, you have a G, and then you have that open G. So we're going to play those at the same time. Now our next note is going to be A. So where are we going to get that from? So before we add a G, and then we have G sharp, and then we have A. So, for our first set of notes, we had G, and then we have A. And so we decided that our A is going to be second fret on the G string. So, for our first two notes. Alright, so I'm plucking the bottom note with my pick, and then I'm using my middle finger to pluck the higher note. Alright, now it's starting to take shape here. Now our next note is going to be B. Now this is where I'm going to start utilizing some of the other fingers. So like I said, I'm going to use my ring finger to get that bottom note. And then I'm going to use my middle finger to get the A on the G string. Now I have to use my first finger to get the B string. Uh, sorry, the B note on the A string. Now, where are we going to get that higher octave from? We're going to use the open B string. Simple enough, right? So our first note, second note. And then the third. So if you're looking at the right hand, you can kind of see how I'm kind of doing this kind of thing. All right? and, and to my knowledge, this is the easiest way to do it. So we have this, octave Gs, octave As, and then octave Bs. Now our next note is going to be D. So we're on D now. So where's the D going to be at? Well, we have the B string, and then we have C, C sharp, and then D on the B string. So we have, that's our new one, okay? So we have our open D, and then we have our ring finger on the third fret on the B string. So, and you can use the middle finger and the ring finger and kind of switch off just depending on what's comfortable for you. You know, sometimes it tends to sound a little bit smoother if you use both fingers, but for right now I'm just going to use the middle finger and the pick. You know, simplicity. So, so we're right there. Our next note is going to be E. So that kind of completes the first cycle. And then we have our chord. So for that last note, simple enough, we can just use our high E string. And then we're there. So, It does take a little bit of practice. It, 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 you know, I'm, I'm still kind of working on it. So, um, because not only do you have to skip sets of strings, but your fingers are kind of going crazy. But once you, once you really get it, then it's pretty exciting. Because instead of this, instead of that kind of thing, you get this. Sounds pretty cool. So now we're there. And then we're going to do that chord. Um, I'd say it's, you know, an E minor 7th kind of thing. We're just missing the 5th out of that, so. Then we're going to do some strumming. David tends to, David Gilmore that is, tends to 
do the strumming pattern a little bit different live and the recording it's one way than live. Sometimes he keeps it the same, sometimes he does it differently. I'm not gonna really get into that, but I'm just gonna go. Sometimes he does this. Or sometimes he does this. So he leaves out that first E. We can do it either way. For right now, I'm, I might switch off between the two, but I'm just gonna show you the notes that you can use, and then you could either add or take away the note, just depending on what your mood is, all right? So now. Now we, we need E, G, E, and then D. So we have our E, and then we have our high E, like we had before, then we have G. Now where are we gonna get G from? We can use third fret on the high E string. All right? And then we're gonna go back to E. So we're using our open E. And then we're going back to D. So like we did going up. When we hit the D, we had our ring finger on that third fret. So when we go to the next phrase, we're just gonna use the same finger pattern that we did before. So. So nothing's changed. So don't think that, oh, coming up and coming down is gonna be different. No, once you kinda understand the basic idea of it, coming up and down, it's not really that difficult. So, from what we have so far, Back to the G, like in the G major, okay? And then we're gonna come back up again, so. Or if you prefer. Just to trusting the purists that may be watching. So what is that? We need... So... E, D, B, and A. So, we're gonna use the same thing that we did before. We got our E with the first finger, higher octave with the middle finger, the high E string, then D, and then we're back with our B, so B, uh, second fret on the A string with our open B, and then our open A, and then our first finger is on the higher octave A on the G string. So it sounds like this. Into that chord, which... Now what do we got? We got, a, we got an A, we, have a, we got the fifth, we have a suspended fourth. We'll just say um, A suspended fourth with the added seventh, whatever you want to call it, okay? So we got... Uh, comes back up again. So the same thing, we got A, B, D, and E. So you're just gonna use the same octaves, the same fingering for going up and down, depending on where you are in the piece, nothing really changes. Once you get the basic idea of it, then it just tends to get a little bit easier. Okay, so. It's kind of tricky. Something like that. Uh, a, B, A, and then G. So we got, I use my middle finger for this. A to the B, A, and then to the G. And now I am back to my ring finger. And then I do the Pete Townsend thing.
So like I explained before, you're gonna have to kind of, you know, you, you, you can play a G like this the whole time, or you can do a regular G like this. I tend to switch off, so if I'm going, oops. So now my middle finger's on there, and then I switch really quick. So you don't have to do it exactly the way I do. This is what is comfortable for me. The, the point of this video is just showing what you can do, that the possibility is there. If you can find some other way, if you wanna, you know, just use the first finger for that B and that A, whatever works for you, there's no rules, as long as we kind of get the notes and it kind of sounds like it, all right? So all together, oops. That's possible, but I'm not really gonna cover that in this video. So, uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more from me, just uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Peace.